Halo. Hello friend and welcome to today's video lesson. So our topic for today is formatting. Formatting is another way of saying arrangement, all right? So in today's video, I will teach you the format for writing greetings and closings of letters, the format for writing titles, and the format for writing dialogues. So you will learn the arrangement for writing greetings and closings of letters, the arrangement for writing titles, and the arrangement for writing dialogues. So let's go right into the lesson. Now, formats for writing letter greetings and closing. So every letter starts with a greeting and ends with a closing. So to write the greeting and the closing of letters, things you must note is that you must capitalize the first word and end it with a comma. And you must capitalize proper nouns. So for greetings, there and Frida. There is the first word in our greeting, so it should be capitalized. And Frida is a proper noun, so it should be capitalized. And you end your greeting with a comma. For the closing, with love and you. With is the first word, so you capitalize it. With love is the closing, so you end it with a comma. And then you end with your name underneath. And because your name is a proper noun, you must start it with a capital letter. This is the format for writing letter greetings and letter closures, all right? Now let's look at the format for writing titles of books, of magazines and newspapers, and titles of TV programs, films, and plays. So for writing titles, you must capitalize the first word and the last word. You must also capitalize every important word in between. So let's look at this book title, Little Red Riding Hood. Little is the first word, so it should be capitalized. Hood is the last word, so it should be capitalized. And in between, we have two important words in between, red and riding. And they must be capitalized because they are important words. Let's look at the magazine title, Today's Kids. Today is the first word, so it should be capitalized. And kids is the last word, so it should be capitalized. Now for our TV program, Peppa Pig, you capitalize Pepper because it's the first word. You capitalize Pig because it's the last word. All right, so the format for writing titles, you capitalize the first and the last word and every important word in between. Now, what are the things that are not important in titles? The first are articles. Articles like a, an, and der are not important in titles. So let's look at this book title, Diary of a Wimpy Kid. Diary is the first word, so it should be capitalized. Kid is the last word, so it should be capitalized. In between, we have wimpy. Wimpy is another important word, so it should be capitalized. But the article a uh, is not important, so you should write it with small letter. All right? So you don't capitalize articles, except they begin the title. The second is short prepositions like at, of, for, by, in, on, to, up, and so on. You don't capitalize short prepositions in book titles. Let's see this book title, The Wind in the Willows. Now, the is the first word, it should be capitalized. Willows is the last, you capitalize it. In between, we have another important word, which is wind, you capitalize it. But in is a short preposition, you don't capitalize it. And the is an article, you don't capitalize articles, except they begin the title, all right? For the last example we saw, diary of the wimpy kid, we did not capitalize a uh, because it's an article. We also did not capitalize of because it's a short preposition. So this is the format for writing titles. Also, we don't capitalize linking words. Linking words are also called conjunctions like and, but, or. They are examples of linking words. Let's see this book title, Jack and the Beanstalk. And is a linking word, so you don't capitalize it. The 
is an article, so we don't capitalize it because they are not important in titles. But Jack, Bean, and Stoke, we capitalize them because they are important words. So these are the formats for writing titles. You don't capitalize linking words, short prepositions, and articles. You capitalize the first word, the last word, and any other important word in between. Now for songs and poems, the format for writing songs and poems, you put the title in a quotation mark. You should write them in a quotation mark. So the poem, Twinkle Little Star, you write it in a quotation mark. And the song, You Are My Sunshine, you write it in a quotation mark. So this is the format for writing titles of songs and poems. Let's move over to the format for writing dialogues. Dialogues is a conversation between two or more people, a discussion between two or more people. So for the sake of this lesson, I will call the man on the blue suit and a tie, Mr. John, and the other person, Ibrahim, his students. So Mr. John is asking Ibrahim, what were you taught in your English class today? And Ibrahim replies, I was taught formatting. This is a dialogue, a conversation happening between Mr. John and Ibrahim. Now let's see some rules we must obey while writing dialogues. You use a quotation mark to indicate what someone said. So for the purpose of this lesson, Miriam is going to be showing us how she reported the dialogue between Mr. John and Ibrahim. And this is what she says. She started her report with a quotation mark, an opening quotation. What were you taught in your English class today? Question mark and a closing quotation. Before she continued, asked Mr. John and the first stop. Now, the words that were spoken by Mr. John are in the quotation mark. And if you notice, she did not add anything to what Mr. John said. She wrote what Mr. John said word for word. So the first thing you must do while writing a dialogue is that you must write what someone said in a quotation mark and don't add yours. Write whatsoever the person said word for word. Let's see this other example. Opening quotation, I will start formatting. And you see how she closed it before she wrote the rest of the sentence. Said Ibrahim. I will start formatting, said Ibrahim. So the, the words that Ibrahim said, word for word, are in the quotation mark. So you must always use a quotation mark to show what someone said. The second rule is that you must capitalize the first word in the quotation mark. So let's go back to our example. The first word is what, and you notice it started with a capital letter. What were you taught in your English class today? asked Mr. John. So the first word in the quotation mark is capitalized. The second example, Ibrahim replied, I will start formatting. I is the first word in the quotation mark and you notice it was capitalized. So when you're writing what someone said in the quotation mark, make sure you begin the first word with a capital letter. The third rule is that the punctuation should be in the quotation Let's go back to the example. Opening quotation mark. What were you taught in your English class today? Question mark before your closing quotation mark. So your punctuation must be in the quotation mark. You get. What were you taught in your English class today? Question mark before your closing quotation mark. Ask Mr. John and the full stop because you have ended your sentence. Okay, so when you're writing the quotation, you make sure that the punctuation that goes with that quotation is inside the quotation mark. Let's see another example. Opening quotation mark, I was taught formatting. Comma before a closing quotation mark, said Ibrahim. And it will stop because your sentence is ended. So the punctuation for your quotation must be in the quotation mark, not outside the quotation mark. Now, in a case whereby what the person said 
The punctuation that goes with what the person said is a full stop. You don't write it this way. Opening quotation mark, I was taught formatting full stop for a closing quotation. Then said Ibrahim, another full stop, no. You change the first full stop to a comma. Alright, because the sentence is not ended. Okay, you don't write, I was taught formatting full stop, said Ibrahim full stop. You can't have several full stops like that on the same line. Okay? Now, the last rule we must observe is if the quotation ends the sentence, add a comma before it. Let's go back to our example. Mr. John asked, comma, opening quotation, what were you taught in your English class today? Question mark and the closing quotation. Now, if you notice, the quotation, that is, what Mr. John said came at the end of the sentence. So, whenever what the person said is coming at the end, make sure you put a comma before you write what the person said in a quotation mark. Alright? So, this time around, Mr. John asked, came first. That was why we had to add a comma to separate it from what Mr. John asked. So, whenever the quotation ends the sentence, make sure you put a comma before it. Let's see this other example. Ibrahim answered, comma, before your quotation. So, Ibrahim answered, I was taught for Martin. And what Ibrahim said, notes that it's in a quotation mark. And the punctuation, the full stop, is inside the quotation mark. So, these are the formats. These are the things we must observe while writing dialogue. This is the format for writing dialogue. We have come to the end of today's lesson. I would love you to try out these activities and see you in my next video class. Bye-bye!